Today on Shop Math, we're going to talk about volume and what it has to do with design and production. You may want to grab a pencil and scrap paper to help you with today's problems, and a calculator if you like. Volume is the amount of space enclosed within a three-dimensional shape. Some shapes have ready-to-use formulas for calculating volume, and in general, if you know the dimensions for the measurements of a shape, you can calculate the volume. We measure volume in cubed units, so if the width, depth, and height of a piece of material were measured in inches, we would calculate the volume in cubic inches. If the dimensions were measured in centimeters, then we would calculate the volume in cubic centimeters. If it were feet, we would measure volume in cubic feet, and the same is true no matter what unit is used to measure the dimensions of the space. Questions concerning volume pop up all the time for people doing design work. Whether doing DIY work around the house or professional engineering or construction, knowing how to calculate volume is sure to be a useful skill. For example, take a look at the engine animation on the left. The part sliding up and down in the center is the piston, and it's moving up and down inside the cylinder. As it moves, it pulls in air and fuel, then compresses it, the spark plug ignites the mixture and forces the piston down again, and on its way up, the piston forces the burnt up exhaust gases out of the cylinder, then the process starts over again. This process of burning fuel is what powers the engine and allows it to run things from lawn mowers to cars, ships, airplanes, and countless other transportation systems. We often hear engines described in terms of volume. A car's engine might be described in liters, as in a 6.2 liter V8 engine. Smaller engines, like those found on lawnmowers or motorcycles, are also described in terms of volume, but might use the units cubic centimeters instead, or cc's for short. In either case, the unit of volume is talking about how much 3D space the piston travels through in the cylinder. A bigger engine will have bigger pistons in a bigger cylinder. They will draw in a greater volume of air and fuel mixture, and the added volume translates into more power for the engine. So mechanical engineers would change the volume of the cylinder to design engines for different applications. The picture in the middle shows a front-end loader dropping backfill into the empty space behind a stone wall. After soil is removed for construction, it often needs to be replaced afterwards with a different type of soil, or gravel or stone. In order to know how much backfill is needed, civil, structural, or architectural engineers would need to calculate the volume of the empty space that needs to be filled. Building materials like these are sold in cubic yards. When designing products or packaging that must contain a specific volume of material, designers use volume formulas in reverse to figure out the dimensions needed for a product. For example, if a designer is creating a water bottle to hold 32 ounces of water, she might need to convert 32 ounces into a different unit of volume that includes distance units such as cubic centimeters or cubic inches. If the bottle is going to be a cylinder, she could use the known volume in cubic centimeters to figure out what radius and height the cylinder should have. So maybe you aren't planning to become a mechanical engineer who uses volume to design engines. There are still lots of day-to-day -day situations for builders and homeowners that are much easier to understand if we know a thing or two about volume. People who design and build pools, spas, and aquariums may need to use volume to find dimensions or dimensions to find volume. Plumbers and homeowners would need to understand volume when purchasing appliances water heaters, washers and dryers, dishwashers, and refrigerators. HVAC contractors, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, need to understand the volume of the rooms in a home in order to install appropriate furnaces, air conditioners, ventilation fans, and other equipment. Landscapers, gardeners, or homeowners would need to be able to calculate volume in order to correctly plan projects and purchase materials like soil, mulch, concrete, stone, gravel, or sand. Let's try a practice problem. Building materials like concrete are sold in units of volume. 
Large batches of concrete are measured in cubic yards and are delivered by truck. One cubic yard equals 27 cubic feet. Small batches might be mixed from bags. Each 50-pound bag makes 0.375 cubic feet. Take a look at the concrete patio shown here. All dimensions are given in feet and inches. Let's see this as a drawing on paper with dimensions included. That's better. Now, if we wanted to know how much concrete would be needed to make this patio, we would need to calculate its volume using the height, width, and depth measurements that we know. But some of these dimensions are given in feet and inches, and we need to convert the inch portion into decimal feet before we can do the math. Our height dimension is 9 inches, so if we divide 9 by 12, we find the equivalent in decimal feet, 0.75 feet. Our width dimension is 6 feet 6 inches, so if we divide the 6 inches by 12, we find the equivalent in decimal feet, 0.5 feet. Then, if we add this portion back together with the 6 whole feet, we find our width to be 6.5 feet. The depth is just 12 feet to begin with, which is fine just how it is. With these dimensions all in the same units of measurement, now we can find the volume. The volume formula for a rectangular solid is width times depth times height. 6.5 feet times 12 feet times 0.75 feet equals 58.5 cubic feet for the total volume of concrete needed to build the patio. How many bags of concrete would be needed to build the patio? We already saw that a 50 pound bag of concrete mix will make 0.375 cubic feet of concrete. So 58.5 cubic feet divided by 0.375 cubic feet per bag tells us that we need 156 bags of concrete mix to make the patio. This answer happens to be a nice even number of bags, but if your answer had come out to an incomplete number of bags, like 156.2, we would need to round our answer up to the next whole bag of concrete mix, since we wouldn't just be able to buy two-tenths of a bag from the hardware store. If the bags cost $6 each, how much will the concrete mix cost for the whole patio? First we take the number of bags needed, and multiply that by the cost per bag to find the total cost of the concrete mix. So 156 bags times $6 per bag equals $936 worth of concrete mix. Look at us go! Now you try. Take a look at the new dimensions for the patio. And remember that some are already in feet, but others are given in feet and inches. Use the same technique shown in the example to figure out these questions. What is the volume of the patio in cubic feet? How many bags of concrete would be needed to build the patio? And at $6 per bag, how much would it cost to build the patio using 50 pound bags of concrete? Let's look again at our example patio. Getting 156 50 pound bags of concrete from the hardware store means trying to transport 7,800 pounds. Most trucks and SUVs are only designed to carry about 1,000 pounds of cargo, and may be able to pull a trailer loaded to around 5,000 pounds. Either way, a load this heavy would take several trips to the store. Also, mixing 156 bags of concrete by hand would take a huge amount of time and work. For a batch this large, it would certainly be easier to have the concrete delivered pre-mixed by a cement mixer truck. But would this option cost more money? Concrete delivered by truck is sold by the cubic yard, not the cubic foot. So before we can figure out the cost of the delivery, we would need to figure out the volume of concrete needed in cubic yards. There are 27 cubic feet in a cubic yard. So to convert our cubic feet into cubic yards, we divide by 27. 58.5 cubic feet divided by 27 equals 2.17 cubic yards of concrete. But remember that we need to round our answer up to the nearest cubic yard, because we can't order a portion of a cubic yard to be delivered this way. We'd need to pay for three. If a truckload of concrete costs $90 per cubic yard, 
and a flat $60 fee for delivery, how much would it cost to build the patio if the concrete was delivered? Three cubic yards times $90 per cubic yard equals $270 for the concrete, plus $60 for delivery, for a grand total of $330 to have the concrete delivered by truck. Now you try. Use the method shown in the example to figure out the volume of your patio in cubic yards. Then calculate the cost of having the concrete delivered by truck using the pricing information shown here. Great work! With a little bit of clever number crunching, we were able to figure out how much material we needed for our project, and even figured out the most economical way to do it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time on Shop Math.